Now, this is the first time a mobile company's opened the Consumer Electronics Show. Now, of course, Qualcomm's not a traditional consumer electronics company. I mean, obviously, we don't make TVs or stereos or game consoles, but we are at the heart of mobile devices and a growing number of connected consumer electronics products that are at the center of everything you do. It's kind of amazing if you think about it right now. There's more than 6.4 billion mobile connections worldwide. That's almost as many mobile connections as there are people on Earth. Pretty soon, the mobile connections are going to outnumber us. Outnumber us. So if you think about it, almost a million new smartphone users are added every single day. That's more than double the number of babies born worldwide. And mobile is fueling economic growth, it's transforming industries, and it's really redefining the way that we live. So, you know, we went out and we asked some folks, what does it mean to them to be born mobile? What does it mean to be born mobile? Born, born mobile? mobile? Being born on the way to the hospital. Somebody born in the age of mobile devices or like something else. I started running in the beginning of high school. Just kind of you get out there, run. You kind of guess how, how long it was. Yeah, maybe it was eight miles. Now I'm in college, and every time I go on a run, I throw my GPS watch. I know exactly how far I ran. I do like big metal public art sculpture stuff. I got contacted for doing a sculpture symposium in South Korea. I have an app for the 3D software I use. I can just email that off to a 3D printer. And I built this 20 foot long, 12 foot tall, two ton stainless steel sculpture. The same process that took me a month and a half took me about three days. It's like I've get like 10 careers out of one career. My goddaughter, I've seen her three times in my life, but I've watched her grow through a screen six, 7,000 miles away just through Video chatting. Well, with my mom's phone, I just like look at pictures and just has a camera and you go like. I started a company called Dog for Dog to help as many dogs as we can in need. These dogs that tend to be in rescue groups are escape artists. We're able to track them with GPS devices on their collars. We see our office maybe once a week. Other than that, it's all mobile. I'm kind of at a hard time because I've just gone to a new school. I don't think we'd still be friends now if we couldn't connect. They can be halfway across the world. He lives in um, India, like China, Indonesia. I have a grandson in Seattle. My name's Aryan Simhadri, and I'm six years old. I'm 21 years old. 47 years old. I'm 32. Years old. And I'm five. Every generation is now born mobile. Born mobile generation. Born mobile is the generation I'm in. And I don't know if people are going to look back at our time and just say, those were the pioneers. They were right on the cusp of the beginning. The brink of something, something amazing. crazy awesome. It's a hell of a generation. Let's make this better. Let's better, make it faster. Pop, 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 pop. Born mobile means like when you grow up, you actually connect to your people, talk to your people. You actually connect to them in mobile. Now, this chip industry, it is highly competitive. But we have the advantage of being mobile natives. And we have been since day one. And we're continually creating new breakthroughs, which lead to amazing new products, including products from companies like Microsoft. I mean, two years ago, right here on this stage, Microsoft took a major step forward, announcing that the next version of Windows would be born mobile that would run on the chips that power smartphones and tablets. Then last year, they showed how Windows was completely reimagined, starting from the chipset all the way to the user experience. And this year, Paul? <laughs> Welcome, my friend, Steve Ballmer, Microsoft CEO. Glad to have you here. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, all of you. It's uh, great to be back here at CES with Qualcomm. Uh, this year, I'm here to actually have a chance to show you some of the phenomenal new Windows devices on Snapdragon and on the market today. I mean, it was a big year. Microsoft reimagined Windows and introduced complete, completely new forms of mobile devices into the world. 
Well, we, we really have, and maybe if, if you don't mind, we'll have a chance to Check show you just a couple, couple of things here. The new Windows PCs, tablets, and phones, I think, are, are stunning. Windows RT devices are the new addition to the family. They're highly mobile, thin, lightweight, uh, super, super impressive battery life, and they have instant on, always connected operation. This one is the Samsung Ative, and right here we have the Dell XPS. They're both powered by Snapdragon. They're quite unique in how they bring together the best of worlds, the world of the tablet and the PC, the touch and the keyboard, computing and mobile, which we think make them absolutely perfect for work and for play. So why don't we start with play? I mean, these tablets are really wonderful. They're super fast and fluid, and they're connected to a growing world of applications. Well, there are now four times the number of applications that we had at the time of Windows launch just a couple months ago. 10,000 applications were added in the last month alone, including some fantastic new applications like Expedia and Fitbit, Huffington Post, the No Textbooks, Dropbox, Barnes & Noble Nook, the Disney's Where's My Water application, and we have a lot of others coming including CNN, Sony's Crackles, Songza, Twitter, and again, many, many more, Paul. You know, and uh, these Windows RT devices, I mean, they really do let you enjoy hours and hours of entertainment, but they also have plenty of power and productivity to get your work done, too. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and these easily convert between the two worlds of work and play just by attaching the keyboard. Just that simple and built into every Windows RT device is our new world-class Office 2013 productivity suite with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. Windows tablets are the only tablets in the world with Office. And I think the capability to not only be, to have some fun, but to be really productive. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, what I really like seeing is how Microsoft took many of these innovations that originated in mobile and incorporated them into Windows to redefine the computing experience. So, okay, so we talked about these things. What about these smartphones you got here? Well, these guys have been great partners on the phone, and we really appreciate it. And the new Windows phones, I think, are incredible. In, in November, we reported that sales of Windows phones were four times greater than during the same year last year, during the same time last year. And during the week of Christmas, we were running at five times the number of phones from the Christmas week of, of, of last year. Oh, it's not hard to see why. Look, you got Snapdragon in the middle, you got these great designs. I mean, this hardware is killer. Well, this one is the Nokia Lumia 920, and this is the Windows uh, Phone 8X from HTC. These Windows phones are cutting edge and are really leading the smartphone industry with hardware capabilities like optical, imi <laughs> optical image stabilization in the Lumia 920 and Beats Audio in the HTC Windows Phone 8X. All right, so we're going to check out. I think we're going to put up my Windows phone up here. So I personalized it by pinning my favorite apps and the people I connect with most to the home screen. And it's the unique thing about Windows Phone is this ability to be personal. This is, in fact, my Windows Phone with everything that's most important to me. Each Windows Phone is as unique as the person who owns it, Paul, me, or any one of you. When we set out to reinvent the smartphone, we didn't want to build just a single phone for all of us. We wanted to build a phone that could be personal for each of us. We also designed the Windows Phone to be the best phone, absolutely the best phone, for anybody using a Windows PC or a Windows tablet. They share, as you can see here, the same iconic look and feel, the same live tiles. With, by logging in with your Microsoft account, you can access the same photos, documents, SkyDrive, all of your Xbox music, Xbox games, and on any Windows 8 device. You can also use these, these 
mobile Windows devices to control your TV, provided it's connected with Xbox and you use our smart glass applications on all Windows phones and Windows tablets and Windows PCs to literally have an integrated second screen experience. So you can cue a movie or a song to play from your tablet and have that come up on, on the PC, navigate the internet on your phone, but use the full TV for that experience. Pretty queer that you guys have completely reimagined Windows. I mean, I gotta say, it is really exciting to me to see what we've been able to do so far and what we're gonna do in the future. Well, I wanna say thank you to Paul for the chance to be here today, but most importantly, I wanna thank you for the opportunity to partner with Qualcomm, to bring to millions of people new Windows experiences on this new Snapdragon processor and with an experience that was Born, Born Mobile. Mobile. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Pretty queer that Microsoft and that man, Steve Ballmer, are born mobile. Sunny day. Sweeping the clouds away. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Big Bird. And I'm Dave. <laughs> That's Dave. I'm, uh, I'm a writer and uh, I'm a designer in Sesame's Content Innovation Lab. Um, and uh, I'm here to show you something pretty special. Yeah, and you're a bird cateer today. Uh, yeah, I'm also a bird cateer today. <laughs> hey, flap those wings. Oh, okay. Hmm, well, pretty good. You Thanks. remind me of my Uncle Henry. <laughs> Only you're better looking. Thank you, Big Bird. Yeah. Um, so guys, we're gonna show you a, a new app. It's called Big Bird's Words. Um, and, uh, and with it, kids can learn about words wherever they find words. Okay. Uh, and that's, yeah, Big Bird? Well, tell them, tell them all about it. <laughs> okay. Um, so with Vuforia, uh, kid, it gives kids mobile devices the ability to, to read words that are out there in the world. Well, Dick Bird Kateer Dave. Yeah? I got an idea. Why don't you show them how it works? Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, let, let's, let's try to find the word uh, Crassinophilus. No, no, wait, it'll take too long. Uh, try the word uh, milk. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, let's, let's find the word milk um, in our kitchen. Okay. So, um, guys, a young bird kateer that's, uh, that's still learning to read. That's you. <laughs> that's me. Just for today. <laughs> uh, that person probably doesn't know the word milk, uh, but Big Bird's words will help us find it. Euphoria is going to give the application the ability to read. Uh, watch. Let's see here. Ooh, here's a word on this, uh, on this uh, box, Big oh, Bird. Oh, is it milk? Uh, let's find out. Guys, I'm just going to take my wordoscope, and I'm going to move it over to the word on the box, and Big Bird's voice is going to tell us if that word is milk. My own voice? Your voice. Check this out, Okay, guys. I'm going to listen to this. Gee, you're good at finding words. You found this one, cereal. But we're looking for another word. Look for milk. Hey, that was Gee, my voice, Dave. you're good at finding words. You found this one. Your voice again. Yeah, hey, it was talking while I was talking. <laughs> I, I, I bet we'd find the word milk, say, if we looked on a milk carton. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> why don't we do that? I'm going to take my, uh, my wordoscope again. And guys, this time, I'm going to move it over to the word that's on this carton. And Big Bird's voice will, uh, will let us know if that word is milk. Here we go. And... You found it. Milk. Milk starts with the letter M. And that milk. was my voice. <laughs> we did it, Big Bird. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's great. We did it. Hooray. Guys, um... <laughs> so, at Sesame Workshop, uh, we know that kids are entering kindergarten with uh, a vocabulary gap. Now, to help close this gap, we have to build vocabulary skills early. We have to help kids learn the words that they see every day. Guys, with this app, we can introduce kids to new words wherever they are. Uh, and we can give kids a, a deeper understanding of, of what those words mean and how they relate to their own lives. And, and guys, I'm thrilled to let you know that, uh, that Big Bird's words will be commercially available this summer. Really? Yep. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> well, that was a good job, Bird Kateer Day. Oh, thanks, Big Bird. But uh, good job yourself. I, you made a fantastic app. Um, yeah. Question, though. Thanks. When did you learn how to code? Well, I didn't. I outsourced it to a bunch of owls. 
Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, guys, thank you very much. <laughs> so long, Paul. Bye, Scott. So long, Paul. Bye, everybody. Come on, Big Bird. Let's find some friends in Oh, boy, Bird's in my face. All right, let's hear it for our friend from Sesame Street. Thanks very much. Gotta love Big Bird. So, this Qualcomm Tricorder X Prize probably gives you a little hint that there's a few Star Trek fans here at Qualcomm. And, um, you know, we can't really wait for this new Star Trek Into Darkness, which is the next film in the franchise. It's coming out on May 17th. This film sounds great. There is a ton of buzz around it. So we're excited to be helping Paramount leverage some of our newest technologies for their incredible new Star Trek app. They're using our context awareness platform called Gimbal to make new connections and interactions with fans. Now Gimbal uses a combination of geofencing, image recognition, and audio recognition to present information to us in creative new ways. So here to tell us more about the app and the movie is actor Alice Eve. Now, I gotta guess that you're facing a little bit of pressure because, you know, Star Trek fans, and I'm guessing there's a few of you out there in the audience. We are serious about our love for this franchise. Yeah, so am I. Um, you know, obviously when we started filming, I was nervous because everyone had made a movie together before, and of course I was the new girl on set. But as you can tell from that, JJ's bordering on genius, and so he was also very welcoming and a gentleman. So, uh, there's been a lot of mystery here. Are you going to tell us a little bit about your character on Star Trek Into Darkness? Yeah, mystery is the name of the game, I think, on Star Trek and any JJ project. But I can tell you, thank goodness that I play Dr. Carol Marcus, who, like you, has a PhD. And um, although... I, I had something to do with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't tell you anything else. Obviously, Dr. Marcus was in the original series and the second um, of the original movies. But since JJ split the universe in 2009, any eventuality is possible. So you're really not going to tell us anything more? Well, what do you want to know, Paul? Uh, anything you want to tell me. <laughs> Come on. No, my lips are sealed. We got, you know, we're just with a bunch of our friends. Yeah, it's here. just a close little group of us. Yeah. 
Um, my lips are sealed, as the the prompter is telling me to say. <laughs> Although I'd love to tell you more, but there is a way you can delve deeper into the Star Trek universe and unveil perhaps some of the mystery. So I'm guessing you're talking about this app we're doing? Yeah, that's right. And I was just playing with it, and it's pretty cool. It, 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 let me tell you how it works. So fans can become a part of the crew the minute they log in, and they go out on real-world missions. So you have to find like a trailer, or if you find a billboard, um, a poster, or if you go into your local theater, you gain points and become more heroic. So it's Pretty fun. Yeah, it's the hero making app. I like it. So, uh, so the way that that thing works, it's uh, Qualcomm's new context awareness platform. Yeah. And it makes all those features possible. And what it does is it lets this app sort of adapt to the user's surroundings. And so the app can actually detect when a mission's completed using a combination of audio scan or geolocation uh, identification or image recognition. And this app. It's actually the first one that's used all three of these technologies together in our gimbal platform. So Big Bird just uses one. Yeah, yeah, you right. guys have a few more. Yeah, we have two more than Big Bird. Yeah, yes. got it. Got it. Everybody's trying to get something over on Big Bird. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bird joke in there somewhere, but I'm not going to make it. <laughs> so um, there's a sound scanner, as we just said, and so fans watching Star Trek Into Darkness videos can manually unlock and sound scan their missions. There's also an image scanner, so they can interact with the film's images to accomplish additional missions. So, you know, the way that that works is with this Vuforia platform that Big Bird was using, and it really allows the app to recognize a whole bunch of different visual targets. So you can interact with, you know, real-world billboards or images or posters, and it's all much, much more seamless than it ever was before. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so don't forget the Star Trek app also uses geolocation, but what was quite cool about that I just heard is that if you're near a billboard, like the app will tell you, oh, if you just go over there, then it's quite cool. It's like an Easter egg hunt. Yeah. Um, so it allows fans to take part in a real world scavenger hunt, or Easter egg hunt, where they accomplish missions by finding specific locations. So what happens with that technology is pretty yeah. cool too, because it uses this very low power location technology. So this geofence, the thing that tells you when you're near things or inside a place, that capability is always on. And so what that means is that fans can auto-complete their missions. I mean, they don't even have to take their smartphone out of their pocket to do it. So the app just runs silently in the background, and you know, fans can unlock special missions just by walking into the local movie theater. It's a bit lazy, isn't it? Yeah, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> Um, so as you accomplish these real-world missions, you rise up in the ranks to earn special content and rewards. So um, you only told us a little bit. Are we going to hear any more soon? You will. You'll hear more in February during one of the biggest, perhaps the biggest, American sporting event of the year. Right, the American sporting event. I am a Chelsea fan myself. We so had that... to make that clear. Um, there we go. Um, Chelsea, so... anybody else? Yes! Star Trek. I love you, Vegas. So uh, there'll be another sneak peek during that, uh, and much more to come after that, obviously, including the film in May. Um, so that's great. And? Also, one lucky fan who registers to be notified once the app launches will have a chance to win a VIP trip to the US premiere. Which that's going to be fun. Cool. Yeah, that will be fun. That will actually be fun. Um, go to... <laughs> Go to StarTrekMovie.com slash CES for details and a chance to enter. So the stuff that Paramount's doing with Gimbal really fits this vision that we have where the smartphone's going to enable a digital sixth sense for us. And what Paramount's doing is they're using the smartphone and Gimbal to market the film in the real world, but at the same time they're pulling the user into the film's world. So the line between the physical and the digital world, they're really blurring. Yikes. So with the new Star Trek app and Gimbal, the future is really not the future anymore. No, I don't think so. So, hey, thanks, Alex, for being here. I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the big screen. Thank you, Paul. Nice to see you. Good to see you, too. Bye. <laughs>
that's particularly promising and cool is electric vehicles. We're working on a unique wireless charging technology called Qualcomm Halo. With Qualcomm Halo, your electric vehicle automatically begins to charge when you pull into your garage or into an activated parking space. And there's no cables to hook up. You don't have to worry about aligning your car exactly. It just works. And as we're working on commercializing this technology, we are seeing some amazing concept cars come out. So we borrowed the keys to uh, this one. So Rolls-Royce pulled the V12 gasoline engine from this car and replaced it. Your key, sir. Thank you very much. With an electric motor. And it's powered by incredible batteries that can store 73 kilowatt hours of energy. So let me put that in context. Those batteries would fully charge over 12,000 smartphones. It's kind of impressive. There, right in there. Anyways, so this electric Rolls Royce went out on a world tour, visited Tokyo, Beijing, Paris, Pebble Beach, Singapore. I was just in Singapore, great place. During that tour, it was recharged by either a cable or by our Qualcomm Halo wireless charging system. Now let me tell you, at the end of the tour, the wireless system proved more reliable. So for the last three months of the tour, they used the Qualcomm Halo system exclusively. Now, if you want to check out this gorgeous car for yourself, or if you want to find out more about our connected car and wireless charging solutions for EVs and devices, come by the Qualcomm Experience area on the exhibit floor this week. And this car is it's pretty sweet. I mean, everything about it is awesome. Even the sound system is awesome. 